Hello baseball fans, I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here for rotopros.com. We're we'll bringing you a brand new video series for DFS MLB. We're going to be looking at some, some strategy stuff. We're going to be looking at some lineup construction, um, some stats, some advanced stats, what they mean, how you can use them to your advantage, lineup selection. There's a whole bunch coming um, in this video series. And today we're going to start out just looking at some simple stats from a pitcher standpoint. I'm going to make these fairly short so they're not uh, long watches, a bunch of small videos. So with that, before we jump in, if you're not a Rotor Pros member, make sure to get over to rotorpros.com. Click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner. And with that, you're going to get a free trial to come in, check out what we're all about. And then you've got, we've got weekly, monthly, and yearly subscriptions. We cover MLB, PGA, NASCAR, NHL, NBA, soccer. Um, pretty much if there's DFS out there, we, we do cover it. We've got people that will cover it. And with the subscription as well, what you're going to get, our big selling point uh, for our customers is our community chat, which is the Slack chat that we've got going. We've got multiple threads going um, for different sports. This is our daily content channel where we list all of our articles, um, our premium articles, our cheat sheets, our videos, pretty much anything that's coming out. This is where we list it. We're in there for one-on-one -on -one coaching as well to not just help you... Um, pick players on a nightly basis, but how to come up with the best strategy and the best process possible so you can be successful in the long run. Get over to rollerpros.com, join us today. Pretty sure you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into the video here. Um, so with a few stats, just first of all, this is a look at my cheat sheet. This is the lineups page. This is the starting pitcher page, which we're going to be concentrating on in this video. We're just going to be looking at pitchers. So as you can see here, I've got stats. We've got labels up here of what these mean. So what I'm going to do here in this video is just kind of explain what these mean and go through the sites looking at fan graphs as well as baseball savant and show you what stats I'm looking at, why I'm looking at them, and how we can use them to our advantage in our daily process. So first of all, um, over on Fangraphs, something I like looking at is going up to the leaders. Um, being as we're doing pitching in this video, we're going to go to 2019 leaders, and that's where I am here. Um, we're right here, minimum innings pitched. Right now it's at qualified. Start of the season, I like to go with uh, zero innings pitched just to look at every pitcher that has pitched so far in the majors. As we get later in the season, it's maybe a little bit better look at just the qualified ones, get some of those small sample size stats out of there. But right now, everyone's kind of working on a small sample size, so we're going to look at everyone. So it sorts it by war, but as you can see, there's a ton of stats here to look at. We've got wins, obviously losses, saves, games, innings pitched. Uh, you got your K per nine, a walk per nine, home run per nine. So those are your per nine stats. We've got the BABIP, uh, left on base percentage, ground ball, home run to fly ball rate. Right? And they've got all these tabs up here, and this is a whole bunch more information. So if we go to advanced, this is where we're going to find, and I'll get into this here in a second, K percentage, not just K per nine, a walk per nine, but K percentage and walk percentage, K to walk percentage, that kind of stuff. We've got some whip here as well on this page, so that's new there. Um, we go to batted ball, we start looking at ground ball, fly ball, uh, line drive rates, ground ball to fly ball, home run to fly ball, that sort of thing. Um, pull, center, opposite, uh, kind of where, where the guys are hitting. And then we've got soft, medium, and hard percentage. We're going to get into that a little bit more as well. Um, and then we've got baseball savant. So what I do over in savant, I like to look at, and what we're going to look at today is the leaderboards. When we go to that leaderboard, it's going to start here by telling us that we're going to be looking at exit velocity and barrels. And, but we want to go down here and we want to select pitchers. And then again, we've got the sample size thing. So this is minimum 10 batted ball events. We want to go to zero so that we get a look at all the pitchers. And we're going to go back and look at 2018 as well. But so th with those stats, you're going to see a lot of this stuff here. I'm just going to kind of pick out and go through some of these stats that are very important uh, to me that I've been using in my daily process. You know, I'll get a few more, understand and study up on those stats a little bit more um, each and every day. And I, I may add some new stats to the sheet. Um, if you've been following my cheat sheet, you've probably seen there's been a few new stats, new columns added each and every day. Um, it's just because I find some new stats that correlate well with, with success and maybe predicting um, guys um, and their hitting abilities, pitching abilities, and stuff like that. So <clears throat> let's start looking at some stats. First off, um, with some stats looking at fan graphs, we've got ERA. That one's pretty self-explanatory. That's pretty old school. Earned run average, how many earned runs the pitcher's given up over a nine-inning stretch. That's something, um, if you're using that as a you know a predictive measure, that's, that's something that you maybe shouldn't be doing. That's kind of Something I don't use in my process anymore, looking at ERA, unless I'm comparing ERA to things like FIP and XFIP, and we're going to get into that here shortly. 
So we've got innings pitch per start. That's, of course, important. Um, more innings pitch, the more opportunity your pitcher's going to get to get outs, um, to get strikeouts. Um, on FanDuel, you're getting points for quality starts. So uh, generally over there, I'm looking at guys that are maybe, you know, going at least six innings, five and a half to seven innings um, on average. And then we've got BIP. You're going to see that a lot. That's just a ball in play. Anytime a ball's hit and it's, between, you know, um, in between the, the foul lines, that's going to be a ball in play. Um, BABIP is just your batting average of balls in play. So um, you'll hear BABIP a lot. That's something that we use to kind of look at from a regression standpoint. If a guy's hitting like 700 in the first week of the season, uh, maybe look at his BABIP while his batting average of balls in play is really high. Like we're not looking at a league average with BABIP. What we're doing is kind of looking at a hitter from his career standpoint. So, you know, if he's like a 300 BABIP, um, career average and he's sitting at like 380 there's kind of telling you there's going to be some regression he's hitting a lot of gaps maybe um, away from the fielders so that's probably an indicator that that regression you know he's going to regress closer to his his career averages um, so that's something that we're going to look at and I'm going to jump in and give you some examples here as we get going but I just want to go through these stats a little bit at the start so then we've got whip and uh, that's just walks and hits per innings pitch obviously for pitchers you want one that's uh, lower in that in, in that uh, stat. Um, if you're targeting against a pitcher, maybe targeting against a pitcher with a high whip helps you because he's going to have runners on base. So if you've got a couple power bats in your lineup on a team facing a pitcher with a high whip, you get exactly that those power hitters in that lineup are going to have more opportunities to drive in runs because that pitcher allows a lot of base runners through walks and hits. So we get into some more uh, advanced stats. We've got FIP and XFIP. So when we go look at a pitcher over here, just going to go back to the dashboard on fan graphs. We'll look at Matthew Boyd. So as you can see over here, we've got an ERA, a FIP, and an XFIP. So we know what ERA is. He gives up 2.96 runs every nine innings that he pitches. So then we've got FIP and XFIP. So we're just going to look at that a little more. It's a little deeper dive into what a pitcher actually is than just an ERA. So with FIP, it just stands for fielding independent pitching and it's an estimate of a pitcher's run prevention independent of their defense so it's looking at strikeouts walks hit by pitch and home runs allowed so then we've got xfip expected fielding independent pitching and now the difference between fip and xfip is fip like i said here is looking at home runs allowed xfip um, is replacing that with how many home runs a pitcher should have given up based on the league average home run to fly ball rate. So maybe a pitcher's getting hit, especially with a small sample size, a pitcher's getting hit hard, um, maybe giving up four or five home runs in his first couple starts. That's probably going to regress most times. So XFIP's just a little bit more accurate in in my own opinion, um, because you're looking, you know, you're basing that off of a league average home run to fly ball rate, which just kind of gets you back to that mean. So XFIP is something I'm looking at. And for an example of that, like I said, Matthew Boyd sitting at 2.96 ERA. His FIP is really, really, really low, 1.65. He's not giving up very many home runs. As you can see here, it's less than 0.4 home runs per nine. So he's not giving up a lot of home runs right now. Um, for his career, he's giving up a little bit more. So as that comes back to you know his own average, um, that's why we see the XFIP at 2.6, while the FIP is at 1.65. So Personally, when I'm looking at an ERA and kind of deciding whether that pitcher is going to, you know, if he's overperforming or underperforming right now, I like comparing it to XFIP. So it's a little bit lower than his ERA. So he's pitching very well this season. Whereas you see some other guys, uh, Max Scherzer, his ERA right now is a 4.45. We know Max is a better pitcher than that, obviously, and that's why we see his FIP and XFIP are almost two full runs lower than his ERA. Um, so that's something where we can say, okay. If we didn't know Max Scherzer was a really good pitcher and this guy was new to the league and, you know, he's gone five, six starts and his ERA is way higher than next fifth, there's something going on there. We can start digging deeper and answering the question why. And that's what that's what we're really trying to do with these advanced stats is just keep digging deeper and deeper and figure out why is this happening? Is he going to get better? Is he going to get worse? Is he going to stay the same? Um, and this is going to help us in our process over the long run. It's not going to work out every day where you're going to be able to say, okay, this pitcher's in a great, he looks like he's going to regress, he's in a great matchup today. He can still go out there and get beat, um, but over the long run, if you're using these advanced stats to your advantage, it's going to work out more times than not um, when you're analyzing, if you're analyzing them in the right way. So moving on, 
we've uh, another big argument that goes on in the fantasy baseball world is K per nine versus K percentage. So K per nine is how many strikeouts a pitcher gets over, you know, when we're looking at it from nine nine innings. So every nine innings, how many strikeouts are they getting versus K percentage, which is the number of strikeouts per plate appearance. Now, the difference between the two, um, I started out using K per nine quite a bit. I was even using it last year on my cheat sheet. And this, some of the differences between them is a pitcher with a high K per nine doesn't really tell the whole entire story. For example, you have a pitcher that goes out there, um, he only pitches two innings because he gives up five earned runs, but he gets four strikeouts. So his earned run average is really bad. His BABIP is going to be really bad. Um, you know, that ERA is going to be propped up, but the K per nine is going to be really high because he had four strikeouts in those two innings. Um, that doesn't really tell the whole story where K percentage is going to tell a little bit more of the story because obviously he's faced more batters, so that K percentage is going to be lower because he faced more batters. So K per nine is saying, okay, he got four strikeouts and two innings, that's great. But K percentage is saying, well, he faced, let's just say, 12, 13 batters um, in that time. So the K percentage is going to tell a little bit better of the story, how good that pitcher is. So I've really converted over to the K percentage side of things. And the average K percentage for a pitcher is about 20%. You're going to be above average pitcher. is going to be in that 25% range. You start getting into the elite pitchers when you start looking anywhere around that 30% or greater range. Um, going over to the cheat sheet, just looking at today, looking at some of those, um, looking at K percentage. Here we've got Jack Flaherty. He's at 26.8% K percentage. Come down here and look at Jake Odorizzi. Really good this year at 30.4%. We've got Chirinos at 27%. Just made a mistake on the sheet here. We'll go back. Um, so that's just looking at some of those pitchers there. And then adding on to that, we, you know, we've got walk percentage or walk per nine. Same thing. I'm going to be going with the, the walk percentage. And you're looking at the average about 8% for a pitcher, um, above average 6 to 7%. And the elite territory is in that sub 6% range. Talked about left on base percentage. Um, it's something that we can look at a lot to try and decide if a pitcher is getting lucky or not. The average left on base. So it's just obviously speaks for itself the percentage of base runners that are left on base while that pitcher's on the mound and the average is around 70 percent so if you see a pitcher that's maybe leaving on like 95 percent of his base runners he might be getting a little bit lucky but if that goes over a longer time period say a year or two and he's sustaining that maybe he's just really really good pitcher um, but for the most part you know if you're looking at guys that are above that 70 percent range can start saying maybe they're getting a little bit lucky in that sense, especially, you know, you start looking at their K percentage, maybe they're not really high or near the elite range of K percentage. Um, that can start be troubling. You can start digging in a little bit deeper. Like someone like Max Scherzer, he could leave a lot of guys on base. Um, I wouldn't be, you know, if he was around that 80 to 85% range, really wouldn't be worried too much just because he has elite strikeout stuff. So, you know, he can definitely get out of innings that way. So just another way to look at it there. And then we get into the plate discipline stuff that I like looking at. So we're just going to jump into a picture here. We were talking about Max Scherzer. So right now he's only leaving 63% on. Now we're going to open up his own personal page here, and we're just going to have a look at his career averages. So what we see here down here at his career left on base, he's 76%. So he's a little above average, but this year he's, he's low. Last three years he ran 80%. I mean, he's got that elite K rate. So I think that's going to come back to normal. And again, that coincides with his XFIP and his FIP being almost two runs lower than his ERA. So obviously we're going to see the numbers um, looking at all the six statistics that we have so far. He's going to get better. Um, those numbers are definitely going to improve in the ER depart ERA department and the left on base department, um, those sort of things. The good news for Max is that he is almost walking a career low batters per nine. Um, Again, going down and looking at that walk percentage, which is a little more telling, 3.7%. Elite, elite range right there with Max Scherzer. So we're, I said we we're going to look at some plate dif discipline stuff, um, something I look at a lot. So we've got this O swing, Z swing, swing percentage, um, O contact, Z contact, contact zone, F strike percentage, and swing strike percentage. So a couple that I'm looking at, I'm just going to go back to the sheet here, is the O swing percentage. And that is the percent of swings and misses that he that the pitcher produces outside of the strike zone. Average is about 30%. Z swing is swing and miss percentage on pitches inside the strike zone. Average is about 65%. F strike percentage I look at, and that's just um, your first, first pitch strike for the pitcher. Guys that are getting ahead in the count, that's going to be a good indicator of that. 
and that is an average of about 59%. And then the big one for me that really tells the story looking at a pitcher's K percentage and whether that's sustainable or not is the swinging strike percentage, which is pretty much just with every pitch that is thrown, what's the percent that they're uh, generating a swing and miss. And the average is about 9.5%. So when you start looking at... I see I've got a mistake here on the sheet, but uh, we'll ignore that that line that's on there right now. When you start looking at... Um, let's go down and look at Jake Odorizzi here. He is 30.4% K percentage and a 14% swing and strike percent. So that's about 4.5% higher than league average when looking at the swing and strike percentage. I definitely think his swing and miss stuff is sustainable. He may have other issues, but his swing and, swing and miss stuff, his K upside is definitely going to be there. Um, same with like Jack Flaherty, 27% K percentage almost a 13% swing and strike rate, 4% above league average. He doesn't walk a lot of guys, so he's normally going to be quite successful with you know looking at those numbers across the board. We go look at his ERA, which is 5 right now. Um, his XFIP is 3.48, so about a run and a half lower than his ERA, plus all these other numbers that we just talked about. He's definitely in line to see some regression on that ERA, most, or positive regression on that ERA um, almost 100% of the time. So. Okay, so moving on to the next one. We've looked at some of that plate discipline stuff. Then we've got pretty pretty straightforward here, the ground ball, line drive, and fly ball percentage. Um, that's just of the balls in play, how many are ground balls, how many are line drives, and how many are fly balls. The average for ground balls about 44% rate. So you see pitchers in that 50% plus range. Marcus Stroman comes to mind. He's an elite ground ball guy. Um, Line drive percentage average is about 21% and fly ball percentage is about 35 So we want pitchers, when we're targeting pitchers, we want a low fly ball rate uh, most times. Uh, we're not going to see that with guys like Max Scherzer who have, you know, the elite K rate. But he does give up some home runs, so we're going to see higher there. But most times, especially when you're looking at value range for pitchers, finding guys that don't give up a lot of fly balls or line drives and generate a lot of ground balls really helps. If they're not going to be getting the strikeouts, we want them to get ground balls, which also helps uh, maybe mitigate some of the walks because they're going to get double plays and stuff there as well. And then just looking at some cor correlation stuff from from fan graphs, some studies that they've done. Um, ground balls generate 0 0.05 runs per out. Line drives generate 1.26 runs per out. And fly balls generate about 1.13 runs per out. So as you can see, the correlation um, line drives are like death to, to pitchers. So pitchers that are giving up a ton of line drives over that 21%, getting into that 25-30% line drive rate, are going to be getting into a lot of trouble. The reason fly balls is a little bit lower is because a lot of those can be pop-ups as well. Um, you know, the low exit velocity, that kind of thing, those um, foul out, stuff like that. So <clears throat> definitely looking for a low line drive rate from your pitchers. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit now about the baseball savant stuff that I've added to my cheat sheet here for 2019 season. Um, just a few things. I'm going to be getting into a, a little bit more advanced into the baseball savant stuff. But the stuff I've already added to the cheat sheet and how we can use it, I'm definitely going to look at here. So first of all, we've got a batted ball event. You're going to see this BBE um, thrown around quite a bit. And it's just a batted ball event. Any batted ball that produces a result, an out, a hit, an error, all fair balls are a, be are a, a batted ball event. And foul balls that result in an out um, or an error um, are also a batted ball event. So that's how that's how uh, MLB.com with the Statcast stuff is tracking this is through batted ball events. So then we've got exit velocity. That's pretty straightforward. Um, I've been talking about it quite a bit so far this season. It's just the speed of the baseball coming off the bat. Um, so we're going to be looking at average. I'm going to jump over to the site here for a minute and look at it. Launch angle is the angle in which the ball leaves the bat. So for a ground ball, you're looking at about less than 10 degree launch angle, line drive 10 to 25 degrees, fly ball 25 to 50 degrees, and a pop-up greater than 50 degrees. That's kind of what we're looking at at launch angle. So going over here and looking at the site, I always like to go to leaderboards. Um, down here, choose my pitchers. Like I said, go to batted ball events, minimum zero right now, and I updated. So a couple things that I look at here um, right off the bat is I like to sort by lowest to highest in this exit velocity. So these are pitchers that are producing a very low exit velocity. Um, this, is some, this is obviously something that's very good and that you want. Um, so this is why I sort this way. So just for instance, um, we know Carlos Carrasco has been struggling a bit this year. So we're just, I'm just going to go ahead and just search him here. We'll look at his numbers. Yeah, he's 456th 
out of 479 pitchers, so right near last in that sense when looking at average exit velocity, 95 miles an hour. And the, 95 miles an hour is the actual number that we look at um, when deciding this over this column over here. We're just going to jump back up to the top. This hard hit percentage over here, 90. How, this is the amount of 95 plus mile an hour exit velocity balls that that, that pitcher has has seen so far this season. So as you can see, Hunter Wood, 17 batted ball events this season. Only once has a ball come off his bat or come off the bat of the opponent at 95 plus miles an hour. The reason we use that, and I'm going to jump over here to this search. I'm going to show you one more time why that number is important that 95 miles an hour. And we're going to look at we want to see batters. We want to group by team because we want to sort this by team. The metric range is going to be exit velocity. We want it greater than 95 miles an hour. And what we see, so what we're looking at here is sort by batting average. Okay, there we go. So what we're looking for is batter, team batting statistics on exit on balls with exit velocity of greater than 95 miles an hour. And we want to sort by batting average, which team is going to be the best. So we're going to hit search. So as you can see here, on balls of greater than 95 miles an hour, um, Arizona leads with a 640 batting average. Um, we actually want to sort this by league. We want to see the league average in this and why it's important to, there we go. So the whole entire league on any ball that has an exit velocity of 95 plus miles an hour, that batter is getting on base over 50% of the time, 53% of the time. Any batter in the league, league average, is getting on base on any ball that is struck with an exit velocity of 95 plus miles an hour. That's huge. We go and we switch this metric down to just greater than 90 miles an hour. That batting average, league average, goes down to 465. We go between 90 and 95, so we eliminate the greater than 95 miles an hour exit velocity balls. You're going to see that batting average drop right off, way down to 290. So anything over 95 miles an hour is going to be a good chance that batter gets on base. That's why we're using that metric. So back to Carrasco. He's allowing an average of 95 miles an hour when the best pitchers in the league are in that, let's just say, average in the 80, 80 miles an hour range. Really bad. He does have K upside. We know this, but he's given up a lot of hard contact. We start going over here and the other column, which was the hard hit. Out of 45 batted ball events this year, 25 of them have seen 95 plus miles an hour exit velocity. That's 56%. Anything over that 30, 35% hard contact, and you're going to see this on my cheat sheet as well, um, right here, exit, well, average exit velocity for the season, as well as um, hard contact um, percentage here. Guys in green obviously are going to be low when you're looking at this picture page. The guys starting in, you know, 40% plus are going to start seeing them in red. That's just really not good. You, those proceed with caution, GPP only for the most part when I see guys with that kind of uh, uh, exit velocity that they're allowing. So it's just another way of saying, okay, why is Carlos Carrasco struggling this year? We can dig a little bit deeper. His, of course, his ERA is high. He's giving up home runs. Why is that? It's because he's giving up a lot of hard contact. So we can use that to our advantage when rostering pitchers is maybe you want to go with a safer guy for cash. Carlos Carrasco still has a ton of upside. We've seen it this season already um, with high strikeout numbers. So he's maybe a better right now. He hasn't been consistent, so he's more of a GPP play with a ton of upside. So that's just kind of way I'm analyzing um, those stats with the average exit velocity and the hard hit percentage. And then the last thing is barrels. Um, so I just want to jump back to this document here just for a second. And we'll look at the barrels and what that means. It's pretty much MLB's way of putting the exit velocity and the launch angle together. Here we go. So a batted ball, a barrel is just a batted ball with a specific launch angle and exit velocity that has a minimum of 500 batting average and 1.5, like a 1500 slugging percentage. To best analyze this on the player level, we're looking at barrels per plate appearance. So this is the barrel zone. So this is your launch angle here coming off the bat, as you can see. So the money zone here, which is this dark, dark red, is greater than 90 miles an hour exit velocity. So between 90 and 120 exit velocity. And between, I would say that's about 5, five degrees and 50 degree launch angle. 
that's going to be a lot of success on there. So that's where your barrels are going to come in. So when we start looking at it, we can sort here. And we're going to go to the 2018 season just because we have a larger sample size. Switch to pitchers. Okay, we got everything here. Just for instance, number of barrels. So this is a pitcher on the bad side. So Mike Fire or Fires had 530 batted ball events last season. He gave up 55 barrels, which is 7.7 .7 barrels per plate appearance. Is not good. Anything in the red is obviously not good. We're looking at some larger sample size here from 2018. Um, 109 Phil Hughes had a 45% hard contact percentage and 12 and a half barrels per plate appearance. So his pitches when they're coming in are hitting um, the barrel of the bat more often than say, start scrolling down here, we'll click off Phil Hughes, start scrolling down here, getting into the blue zone as you can see, we're looking at guys like Trevor Richards, only give up 22 and 358 batted ball events, only four barrels per plate appearance. So that's where the barrels come in. It's just a more advanced stat to say if that bat or that pitcher when he's pitching, is he hitting the batter's barrel of the bat? Is he missing the barrels? And if, obviously, you want the guys that are missing the barrels, unless you're stacking. Then, of course, you're going to sort and look for guys that are, you know, hitting the barrel of the bat more often. So that's something that um, I'm looking at as well. I've got all this information on my cheat sheet, like I said, um, so you can come in, you can have a look at. It. This is how I compare pitchers. Looking for obviously green is going to be better, like I've I've mentioned before. My cheat sheet overuse red is going to be bad. Um, so that's just the way I go about it. So like for tonight, like I said, Jack Flaherty stood out to me. Um, Joe Musgrove here, he's had a very low ERA. He's going to regress for sure. He's in that 3.67 XFIP, but that's still close to that really, you know, to that elite range of XFIP. So he's been doing very good. 26% K rate, which is above average. 13.3% swing and strike rate, which is well above average. He's walking under 5% percent of batters as well so everything's kind of and then we go over here and we look at his exit velocity under 88 miles an hour average and only 34 percent hard contact percentage which is one of the best on the slate that's how i'm analyzing the pitchers that i want on any given slate and then we go see that he is a 140 favorite in a game with a seven and a half total in a pretty good pitcher's park as well against an opponent we start sliding over the sheet here i know this is past the stats that we're going to talk about this is just some of the why looking at arizona um, this is their versus lefties. This is their versus righties. They have been better versus righties, so that's why it pops up here in the opponent versus daily split column. Um, so they, you know, that also adds to it. So it's just another check to the box when you're looking at Joe Musgrove, going to be one of my top pitchers tonight. Um, that is how I use the stats from Fangraphs and MLB Savant to break this down in my sheet, to break it down on a daily basis, and come up with a way to. Get the right process and picking your pitchers every day. Like I said, it's not going to work out every day, but you need to stick with the process and using some of these advanced stats and getting that process down of narrowing down the pitcher field each and every day is very important and advanced stats should play a huge role in that. Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned. I got more coming up. Next, we're going to be looking at stats for batters and getting into that a little bit. And then we'll move on into some more um, strategy stuff on a daily basis when constructing your lineups. If you have any questions, hit me up in the Rotor Pros community chat, in this video in the comments below, or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs9. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And with that, let's have a great day. Let's go get some green screens, everyone. Good luck.